All right, so this is target 1A, and this is the second day, so we're still on um, interpret the structure of expressions. So this is all the objectives for target 1A. So first, I can determine the expression representing the perimeter of a geometric figure. Second, I can write an expression given a number sentence. Third, I can write an expression in as few terms as possible. So this is new, and this is uh, what we're going to be covering today, along with... I can determine if two expressions are equivalent by using properties and order of operations. All right, so let's just start with a quick review. Determine the expression used to represent the perimeter of the geometric figure. So this, even though it looks like a square, um, is not, because you can tell that the opposite sides are equal, but not all four sides are equal. So what you want to do for this is basically, so we've got 3x plus 4x plus 3x plus 4x, add them all together so they all have x with them, right? So since they all have x, we can just add the numbers in front. So 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4 gives us an answer of 14x. Second example from yesterday, write an expression that represents 14 times the sum of a number in 11. So we take that, and what I'm going to do, and you can do this if you like, is I like to single out the numbers first. So it represents 14, the sum of a number and 11. Now remember, a number means it, it's a variable. So this right here, a number, means variable. Okay? So we've got that, and then I'm going to go ahead and single out the mathematical operators. So 14 times, that tells me that I'm multiplying. The sum, that tells me I'm adding. Now, when you have two operators right after each other like this, you're going to take this 14 times. So this 14 is going to be... 14 times the sum, so whatever is following this is going to be addition, and I have to do that first. A number, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll just use x and 11. And I can rewrite this because I don't need this multiplier when I have parentheses over here. So I can just rewrite it like that, which gives me my answer of 14 times the quantity x plus 11. So anytime you hear me say the quantity, I'm referring to what's ever inside these parentheses. So it's 14 times the quantity of x plus 11. All right, so let's move on to the new stuff. So rewriting expressions in as few terms as possible. It's basically when you're asked to do this, all you're being asked to do is perform order of operations when necessary. Um, it's not always necessary. And then combine like terms. That's it. So, for example, here we have another example. Rewrite the following with the fewest terms possible. So I've got my expression here, and I'm looking for like terms. So kind of like I suggested, okay, so circle that and the sign next to it. This doesn't have a sign, so that's a positive 5x. And I look and I see if there's any other x's. Well, there is right here. So I'm going to circle the negative 7x. So now... I can say, well, I'm going to go ahead and I will group those um, together. And that's going to give me 12x. And I have another variable here, this plus 14y. Thing is, I don't have any other y's in here. So that's just going to stay the way it is because this is an x, this is a y. They're two different variables. And remember, we can't put them together if the variables are different. And then finally, we have a negative 9 and a positive 11. So when we do that negative 9 and that positive 11 together, that's going to give us okay, our answer. Now the other thing you can do is before you get to this step, you can group them together. So I've got 5x minus 7x. So I took my x's and I put them together here. And then I have a 14y because that's by itself. And then I took that 11 minus 9 and I put those together and then you can just perform the operations individually and get an answer of negative 2x plus 14y oh let's see look what I did up here 
common mistake. 5x minus 7x. I forgot about the minus sign. Once in a while, I am going to purposely make a mistake in the video just to see if you catch it and if like you're seeing it and you scratch your head. Once in a while, I will even not correct it in the video in the hopes that you find it and let me know. So the, if that happens, the first person to email me with the mistake and the correction, um, again, my email is phiggins at jsmorton.org. And again, this is only for my students. So if you're not my student and you're watching this, sorry. Um, but if you're one of my students and you catch this when it's assigned, you say, hey, for example, three, you put 12x and I follow through and that's part of my answer. And this is what it should have been. You will get some uh, extra points in there. But anyway, 5x minus 7x is negative 2x. 14y is just that. 11 minus 9 is positive 2. All right, now if you need to determine if expressions are equivalent, it's basically the same steps. Perform operation, order of operations when necessary, combine like terms, and then you add one more step to it, and that's see if the two sides match, if they're identical. So we take this example here. Are the two expressions equivalent? Explain. So I've got negative 5 times the quantity, x plus 2, equals negative 5x minus 10. So just looking at them, they're not identical right now. However, if I take this expression and I say, okay, let me look at the left side. I've got order of operations that I can do here. I can simplify this more. So I use a distributive property, so negative 5 times x, and then negative 5 times a positive 2 is going to give me negative 5x minus 10. So we have negative 5. Remember, this is really negative 5 times x plus negative 5 times 2. That's the distributive property. So kind of hop the fence, and whatever's on the left outside the parentheses gets multiplied by everything inside the parentheses. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And now look, now we have this being identical to this. So we would say, yes, they are equivalent because the left and the right side equal each other. In other words, they are the same. So one last example before I let you go. This should be example 5. Same type of problem. Are the two expressions equivalent? Explain. So I have negative 12 plus the quantity y plus 3 equals negative 12y minus 36. Common mistake that happens here, so pay attention. You might want to say, well, this is outside the parentheses, so I'm going to just multiply that, like you said, and distribute. The problem with that is it's not outside the parentheses. It's negative 12 plus this together. It's not negative 12 times that together. So we can just simply remove the parentheses because when we add these together, it's still the same. And then we would combine these like terms because we have a positive 3 and a negative 12, which would give us negative 9 plus y. Now that's as simplified as it can get, equals negative 12y minus 36. So no, they are not equivalent because the left and the right side do not equal each other. In other words, they're not the same. So hopefully you get all this. If you don't, please ask questions when you see me next, and we will get it straightened out, and we'll get you on track. All right, guys, you have a good one. Thank you, and have a good night.